morning morning everybody and uh welcome to another edition of the bread for soul convos with myself say lsg and today is a the 69th episode um i've been doing this for 69 days wow. each and every day of the week and mm. uh i've been so blessed you know with the amount the kinds of artists that i've i've been able to get on the show you know it's a blessing to me and today uh, it's no different uh, i've got the legendary mikas i say legendary guys and with all truthful sure. you know uh thank you so wow. much for joining me how are you guys doing yeah we're good man how are you sure as well mo, mo, uh, it means i'm saying it means a lot it means a lot man thank you so much bro no thank you nice thank to you. be here with you yeah let's see that uh nice haircut you've got there going mo what's up <laughs> <laughs> yeah man i told you i'm just trying to be like my dad you know this afro you yeah, know yeah 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 you're like a very brabanza <laughs> over there each other sure sure yeah, Togo yeah, yeah. how are you man Ah, I'm good, man. I'm chilling, man. It's uh the weather today is a bit chilly, so yeah. Did you go for your morning yes, ride today? Huh? Did you go for your morning ride today? No, no, no. I went for a morning ride yesterday, but and it was so windy, so it was just hectic, man. Yeah, I I'm think not fit enough. I thought I was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, you, you, and and uh, Mo, uh, I know because of the the pictures that you post on social media you guys are big on on you know physical fitness um are you the same jay or are you just the lazy one of the group <laughs> listen uh, man, i i'm the i'm the guy that doesn't do a lot of exercise i don't like it that much i like doing what i like but anytime that these two guys will uh, ask me to join them <laughs> in their respective uh professional <laughs> sports that they enjoy i end up whooping <laughs> yeah. the ass man you know <laughs> <laughs> no that's no, true I, that's i'm way true. lazier i'm way lazier than them and i yes man i i like to eat too much yeah. and training is is hard work man. Yeah, i take my hat off to these two guys man they've been training so hard man i need to get uh, myself only, back only, into training only this year i've been training so hard like three <laughs> months ago yeah no Otherwise, but but i i i, I beg to differ because like your your body tells us different because if i see dr duda pictures in 2010 when you guys started and dr duda pictures yo, now is there's a big yo, difference yo. so give yourself props my brother you've done a lot <laughs> <laughs> you've done a lot you've done yeah, a lot, yeah, done I, a lot. <laughs> i've done <laughs> let's let's get on with it guys like um you guys have truly <laughs> Uh, as a band you've truly be um uh, you are a truly inspirational brand you know like with such a fast rise into the music industry into the mainstream um and firstly congratulations in reaching 10 years you know not many bands you know last for sure two years you know two years in guys are like ah these guys are divas this one is this such yes. but for you guys to be able to do it for such a long time such a big thing i do have to start by asking you guys something i've been itching to know um the dynamics especially let me direct this question to you dr duda the dynamics of um you guys being individual artists and the that balance between you dr duda jay's got his own cooking thing going he's got his own music thing going moti does the same brass night he's got his own projects going but you too has your own, you've got your own i want to know about has that something that you've had to learn to work around that yes you are a band but you also do exist individually yeah man um i guess what you said um, <clears throat> it brings back um everything where when we when we started you know so 10 years ago when we started we just um we were just like three guys individuals um don't like the same things um you know someone loved doing that someone loved doing this you know, so we had to learn um, each other. Like we always say, it's a relationship, you know, so you have to, sometimes you have to compromise, you know, you have to come in between and respect one another, you understand? So as much as we, we are three individuals who loves um, different things, there's one thing that we normally, uh, when we come together and do um, good as one, you know, which is making good music, you know, together, you know? So, and that doesn't take away um, the individual artist um, within, 
you know, the three of us, you know. Mm. So Moti on his, you know, jazz um, type of thing, he still want to do, continue to, um, you know, those. And then looking at Dr. Duda, the deep tech, um, house guy, soulful, I'm, I'm still that guy, you know. Mm. And when looking at Jay something with the soul, you know, singing R&B type of, you know, those kind of chill. He's still Jay something at the end, you know. But there's one thing that we know. Um, there's Mikasa. It's doing something that nobody is doing at the moment. You understand? Mm. Um, talent wise, when we together, we we are. I don't know. I don't know what to say. But we're just amazing, bro. No, you when, are. When when we do music together, it's it's it's, it's such an amazing thing because. It's like three guys, they don't even rehearse. They don't even, you know, <laughs> but, when, <laughs> but one thing when they're together, like something magical comes up all the time. Mm. Do you understand? So sometimes it's difficult to explain to to, to, to people that um, we we are so blessed in such a way, man, that I don't know. It's such, so hard to explain. Yeah. You know? But yeah. yeah, I guess uh, what makes us... Um, stay together it's just one thing we had one goal um which is to spread uh, positivity um, through our music and you know spread love whether you're black or white indian colored all over the world and that, that's what we're doing our music is just going all over the world man, since we started you know yeah yeah and yeah. um jay it's been 10 years i mean like 10 years uh, it seems like a long time but also it, mm. it feels like for me, it feels like it's such a short period of time, but it feels long only because of the amount of work that you guys have done in the 10 years. You know, like it's 10 years later, five albums done, so many awards, so many shows that you guys have performed on. Does it feel like it has been 10 years for you? Like, or has, is everything going so quick? Sure. It's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting question. You know, there's times where I feel like it's been it feels like it's been two years. It's just the other day that we were at Pyramid Studios, downtown Joburg, sleeping in the studio, making these streets. You know, it's, it's literally the other day. Um, and, and fast forward till now. So there's times where it feels long and there's times where it feels short. Um, but I think more than anything, you know, your, your show is called Bread for the Soul. And I'm thinking about bread itself. Like bread, when it stays fresh and you're able to keep bread fresh, it will always be nice. So it's about keeping things fresh for yourself and for others that allows you to feel like, oh, it's just another year doing what we love. That's mm -hmm. kind of what it feels like. Mm -hmm. But I've never felt personally, and I know that the guys shared the sentiments, I've never felt this good about being a part of Mikasa, making the music that we're making right now. I really feel like 10 mm -hmm. years later, we've, we've almost like, I feel like we've almost grown up a little. Mm -hmm. I feel like we found we found something unique. We've managed to like reconfigure the system for ourselves mm. more than anything. Mm. Um, and that's that's just trying to keep things fresh. So yeah, I mean, there's times where it feels long and times where it feels short. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, and for me, like I, I, talking about these streets, I, I was talking to more and I do remember that like I, I was working on a, on a TV production studio um, and I, we received the music video and you guys are there. I could go, Alex, or oh, where it is. Alex, yeah. Yeah, Alex, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, but the music was so fresh. And I think for me, what, um, you know, drawn me to you guys as a band more was like the soulful kind of music um, and seeing artists so soulful, but still crack it into the mainstream like you guys did. You know, it was such a marvel thing, marvelous thing to watch because it's it see it has felt like throughout the years um, you needed to leave people needed to leave their soulfulness their authentic side in order to be something else in order to succeed yeah. in the industry. But with you guys, I've seen so much authenticity. You know, like throughout the years, mm. and it's such a dope thing to see. <clears throat> but more, I want to ask you, yeah. man. Like you, you and I have worked on your concept, uh, Brass Nights, and and. I remember yeah. you telling me how much of a brotherhood you guys are as a band, you know, like how important is that part in making you guys like stick together for such a long time? Yeah, I mean, you know, 
there's one thing that we we've always done like within Mikasa, and, and that's like support each other, you know. Like if someone wants to do something, and we actually just motivate one another. You know? If Jay wants to do something, if Dude wants to do something, then we just pump each other up, you know. And um, yeah, and then I guess you know it's from the one thing to the next thing, of course. And um, yeah, we just communicate well, you know. We communicate well, and uh, we assist each other, man, like wherever we can, because we know that we're like a family, you know. So um, we just have that ongoing brotherhood thing that that just can't stop, man, you know. Because I mean, it's also because we love what we do. We love Mikasa. And uh, we're blessed with what we have also, man. You know what? So we just want to get better and better. But we help each other, man. You even heard Duda tell me, uh, well, speak about the links right now. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Talking about <laughs> You know? Yeah. But yeah, the guy's like teasing me because I'm the worst guy with technology. <laughs> but you know, for me, Jay and Duda, you know, Jay and Duda have been the guys that have always, you know, just been like, hey, come on, man. When you're going to get this, when you're going to get that type of thing, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, like, I'm grateful to have them as my brothers. And uh, yeah, man, I, I, I'm just excited for this 10 years that we have. And I can't wait, like, for us to become a dollar and still look back and say, hey, hey, yeah, but Mikasa was on fire, you know? And it still is on fire type of thing, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I guess that's the long um, relationship that we want to hold together as the brothers. So yeah, yeah man, you know, I'm really grateful for the gents. And, uh, you know, I'm happy that each guy can get to do his personal dream also that's on the side mm -hmm. and also join it with Mikasa, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, man, and then everyone just goes home happy, you know. We always go home with uh, with some big smiles. Yeah, for sure, bro. And, and I love seeing you guys, like whenever you guys are together, it shows, you know, and it's not like uh, it's, it's being faked or anything. Like it's almost like you guys were really meant to be together. Uh, sorry for the sure. cliche, but um, Duda, um, you have uh, you were already releasing hit songs by the time you met these guys, you know. And I was asking them before we jumped on, um, uh, who's the eldest in the group? They're like, ah, definitely Duda by by a mile. <laughs> They're like, you are the father, you know. Like, but anyway, we, like we call him we call him father actually. His name is. <laughs> But father with a D, F A D A, father. <laughs> Hola, father, father. Dude. <laughs> He's the father of the group. <laughs> yeah, but um, uh, the point I want to get to though about it's about the music specifically, house music. You know, like you were making hit and house music hits before you met the guys. Has how has it always been a unanimous decision that house music will be the core of the music? But I mean, like on the new album. I've I had some variations. You've got a song with Rouge, which is dope. Um, but has it always been a unanimous decision to carry on with house music instead of doing many different things that you could possibly do? Um, I'm I'm glad you've mentioned the uh, um, the variation on this album, and um, it's something that we, we 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 when we met, we were just like this. If you listen to this album, this was us when we met where multi um with the jazz background jay something with that you know soul r&b ish and then i come in with that soul um gospel deep house you know that was mikasa so if you're listening to this album it's mikasa right now um we were doing um house music uh simply because i think um that was popular um house music was pop back then um uh, looking at my background, where I come from, from both DJ Nduso, Fresh, and you know, all the radio stations were, were just playing house music, you know. Mm. So when we met, we were like, no, let's just put soul in it. And I promise you, we never thought the soul will just, you know, make it to the to the top of the list, you know. Because, you know, um, there was, I don't know what happened to house, but suddenly it was called uh, commercial. Then it went to gold, it went to, you know. Mm. But we, we we just call it music now, man. There's no, we're not putting any genre into it, you know. So, yeah, man. Yeah. So, if this album, we made it, it's multi J something, Dr. Duda. Yeah. In yeah. true, you know, color, if I may put it, you know. Yeah. And also, I just want to say, I'm not responsible for multi's haircut. <laughs> <laughs> he, he did say that he, he, he wants to uh, to show a bit more resemblance of his dad. Uh, no, he's happy. He's happy. 
He just said some nice Makurunya and now he thinks he can do it. And uh, um, <laughs> just speaking about the album, uh, uh, when I do that, and like, let me actually uh, uh, throw this to you uh, more because you spoke about um, I mean, like your dad passed away, you know, but he was this legendary figure in the music industry with Mango Crew. There is a tune in this new album. Um, I think it's it's a tribute to him and someone else. Who's the other person? And if you could just that, like, yeah, who's the other person? Sure, that's my mother. Oh, yeah. So the track is called Banza and Patsy. So that's my mom and dad, yeah. Oh, but yeah. Um, yeah, but this is actually... You know, something that Jay came up with when we were busy recording, you know, and he was like, Mo, um, like, I really think you should actually do this this interlude, you know, and that just pays tribute to your dad. But you have to put your yourself in your dad's shoes and pretending to be playing, like, for, for your mother, you know, or how he should have played for your mom, you know. And that's, that's um, like, listening to that piece, like, like it sounds like, ah, oh, this was easy for Mo, but that wasn't easy for me because that's the one track where, my trumpet tone even sounds different because he did teach me the trumpet, but we never had the exact same sound in him, you know? But that track, that sounded like yeah, that was him playing, you know? And uh, yeah, it was one of those like hardest tasks that I had, you know, during the the making of this new album, you know? And, um, you know, I also just like appreciate like like how the gents were like, yo, man, like, like you have to do this thing type of thing, you know? And I was like, yeah, you know, like let's give it a bash. So... Um, yeah, this is something that, that I truly, truly, truly also just give like more of the credit to Jay, you know, because I mean, he, he saw this whole thing and he was like, yo, and the time that the first day that the album came out, you know, you, you, you won't believe how much or how many people were actually commenting and saying, wow, where did this track come from? You know, and it's also like something that also makes, makes people see that we can actually play anything that you want to play, you know, and, uh, because that was something different. Mm. Uh, for everybody so 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 yeah that's something that's, that's very special to my heart and um like there's just there's just there's just this feeling every time you play that song there's just something that's that just like like it feels like my dad is around you know yeah. and it feels like my mom is also there in the crowd watching you know mm. and yeah there's just this good thing about it you know and uh, yeah it's a beautiful I think track if i can add uh Mr. if i can add like i think that what, what Mo is saying is something that I've been feeling too. You know, I think for the first yeah. time, and it's, it's also what Duda's been saying, uh, yeah. I think for the first time we've just gone and made an album that represents us, our feelings, yeah. our thoughts, yeah. what we're going through, what we've been through, and what we think is going to happen. Um, yeah. and, and I think that for the first time we've actually been honest. And what I mean by this is that when you get into the commercial game and all of yeah. a sudden you are a top top of pop act um you fall into this pressure to keep that up mm. so you're just writing songs to write hits mm. i mean mm. to be honest to be fair i think that's the majority of the commercial music scene everybody's just trying to get the next summer anthem mm. and yeah. i hated that i hated mm. that because man we we don't make summer anthems we make life anthems mm. our music these streets heavenly sent la vida all the glory 10 years old bro Mm. still can mm. bump it in a club, still can play it in your car. That is what a hit song is to me. And I think that Banza and Patsy, that track was very important for, for, for us, um, mm. especially for Mo. And I wanted him to be able mm. to, we wanted, you know, and I think like Mo, it's, it's not even about the credit yeah. to anybody. It's the fact mm. that it's a tribute to a legendary man who meant so much to mm. us as a family yeah. and more so to Mo. And for me, I get the same feeling, man. When I hear Duda playing keys and Mo starts playing the trumpet to that song and we're doing it live, man, I just stop. I just mm. stop and watch. I'm like, that is what passing the baton is all about. Mm. And I'm sure that wherever mm. Prabanza is, he's looking at that moment and saying, wow, yeah. that's, that's my boy. Cool. And that's, that's yeah. what makes us proud. You know, it's a beautiful, I, I mean, you know, hats off to Duda and Mo on writing mm. that it's, I mean, it's a phenomenal piece of work, man. That, mm. that body of that mm. song for me, yeah, it's, it's almost like you're just showing off, you know. It is beautiful, <laughs> and, and, and and actually, it's almost like uh, you saw my questions because I was getting into a similar question to you, Jay. Uh, you know, um, I, I listened to an interview that you did, I think it was two years ago on, on Kid Funk's show, and you mentioned about 
this thing about writing music for hits and how you kind of without knowing it before you know it you kind of already trained um you are you becoming trained or you're training yourself to become somebody who writes uh, and subconsciously without noticing it you st- start writing for the hits you start writing for radio but yeah. but you've had such strong songs especially when you write personal songs you know when you write something that's so inspirational and i want to ask you about the balance of writing um of you as a writer the balance of writing personal work and writing work that seemingly might be easily commercially av- viable if i may put it like that um how do you yeah. balance that out has that ever been something that um conflicts within you Sure, man. You know, being a songwriter and being, I, you know, I started playing writing songs on guitar. You know, that was and 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 I only did it because I wanted to express my feelings. I didn't I didn't understand anything about music in terms of the commercial ability of music. I just wanted to make music. And then when we started Mikasa, the first album was a very special album because I didn't know what I was chasing as a songwriter. I was just writing. I didn't know what I needed to do. I didn't have a formula. I didn't have expectation. I just made it. And that's always the beautiful the beautiful thing about your debut album, right? You you don't have any pressure. Mm-hmm. And the second album there was a shitload of pressure. Like it was like, yo, you guys have to make you have to have make a comeback and you have to show that you're not one hit wonders even though the album had four hits. But I mean, <laughs> the the whole thing was the pressure and and although we did it in the second album with Jiga turn you on your body like it was another bang of an album um the third and fourth album drained my soul to the point that i even said to mo and duda i don't know if i can actually carry on doing this thing um and that's when we had the bit of like or for me personally that's when i really started to feel like i don't know if i was built for this um because i would write a song and i would know it's not a hit so then i wouldn't pursue it I would just leave it because I know that like I know how to write a hit song. I know what what works on radio. I know the the sort of sonic uh waves that you have to create, the melodies that you have to create and the stuff that you need to be singing about. That's mm. as a songwriter if you're not thinking about that, you 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 will have a very difficult time writing a commercial song. Mm. Um and and that's what I really loved about writing this album is that I didn't care. I literally said to the guys, "Man, listen, I'm going to get myself out of the box. I'm going to write down what I feel and what I think. And I'm going to get into their heads and and know about what they're going through and write songs that will present what we're going through as a collective. So as a songwriter 10 years later, um I've I've learned the the most valuable lesson and that is never never sacrifice yourself as an artist and what you feeling for the world. because you will fall into a deep hole that you now making music for other people and not for yourself. Mm-hmm. The real secret is to find something that you feeling that you feel that that when you get it out you can have it can like let that emotion out because that's what it is. An artistic expression, right? Mm-hmm. It's to get it out. Yeah. But to get it out in a way that can also say to Lesejo when he's listening to it, oh Yeah, I relate to that. So for me it's it's just like yeah, it's been a roller coaster of a ride, man, you know. Mm. You learn these things as you go. Mm. Um and I think that now in this album we've we've finally learned how to just let go. Or we've learned again how to just let go and just to make music that we feeling and hear. Yeah. And uh I I want to ask you Duda about like the this thing of going away, you know, to make music just away from the city and being at, at a place where you can solely focus on on creating music um does that have <clears throat> any amount of pressure you know on on you having to deliver and uh, probably maybe possibly good pressure you know because like for example i'm i'm very chill with my productions and uh, if i don't finish something today it's okay i can see it again next week but when you in that space where you kind of have to do something we booked this thing guys for two weeks something has to come out of this what what are some of the benefits with regards to going away um somewhere and and making music yeah man i guess um with going away um to us it was it was it was meant to be it was meant to 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 happen it was supposed to happen 
um, simply because you know when we start, when we started, um, we were just simple guys, you know, no family, you know, just us three. You come back late from the club around 5 a.m. Nobody's bothering you. You can just sleep, you know, throughout the whole day. You wake up the next morning, catch a flight back to, you know, so all that, man. Um, we, we, we now have families, we have kids, you know, everyone is married and the like time wise it's no longer the same you know and the kids are growing you know they they tend to understand now um when, when you go into studio they also want to press buttons move around things you know and if you up it's like your interviews radio tv there was there was so much you know um that um was distracting every you know single type of production when it comes to making uh, new music, you know. And there was one thing that we really bad when it comes to we, I don't know, oh, we, we, we don't meet a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. So we had to do the getaway thing. So to for us to be locked in one room where our families are far, network issues, you know, the phone is not working properly. You know, so so we can just focus on on making music because that's what we're good at yeah. when we're together making you know good music you know so it was meant to be like that you know yeah. so we all have our own you know private um little studio where we can you know record and send to jay and then we'll send back the vocals but it's not that you no know, uh I, I don't know which way to put authentic or what it's not that you know so when we're together, you know, somewhere you can just know, okay, do this, you know, mm. or oh, now do that, play this line, you know, so it works much better, you know. Mm. No, I understand what yeah. you mean. And, and Mo, I want to do ask you about this process, right? Um, because all of you guys are responsible for different roles within the band, you know, Jay will be vocals, you are on, on the horn and, and Dr. Duda production. But I want to ask you with regards to making the music, how much of uh influence do you do the three of you have on one another's role so is it a case of you writing horn lines um and knowing okay these are gonna work i'm gonna present it to the guys um jay something is writing lyrics and he's gonna present his own lyrics to you guys do that the same um how much of how much influence do you each have on each other's roles um, um just to putting the the work together sure well we actually you know what for oh dear. vocals to horns to um you know like jay can come with the most of the vocals sometimes but he can come and be like hey listen guys i just want to add one more verse here you know what do you guys think you know mm -hmm. so it's always like like the thing where we're like yo man this is what we or maybe Duda can say, hey, man, why don't you do this, Jay? Or, or, or just swing it this way, you know? Mm. And then it's the same with production also, you know? We just say, yo, why don't you take this type of vibe or, or do this, you know? And the horns, it's the, the same thing with the horns, you know? Um, like, I actually remember once when, when Jay was like, listen, man, I actually want to do, for this album, I actually want to do the horns with you, you know? Mm. And I was like, yeah like no problem you know you know it's always good to hear what what the next what the next member actually has in his mind you know mm. and because that's how you grow mm. you know because sometimes you may be thinking like a certain way but you you actually may become stuck in that for a long time and not because you're not good but you you box yourself up you know mm. so when you tend to listen to your your band members at times you actually see like a different side of yourself you know mm. you're like wow i actually played that you know but mm. not by yourself because it's a thing where we admit and be like you know we do help one another you know? and i think it's it's the same for the gents you know they can also add to this but i mean that's how we create music and that's 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 how mikasa has been going you know yeah. but so it was quite an interesting it was quite an yeah. interesting thing. It's a, it's a, a really interesting question, Sejo, because um, yeah. for the last four albums, I would go as far as to say that we were way more individual in our approach than we were with this album. Mm. And it was it was yeah. how we it, it was a strategic move, you know. Like mm. Duda would make a beat, and then we would work on that beat. I would write the song, 
Mo would come with his part and then we would put the song together. Uh, yeah, and done. with this album, it was different, man. With this album, we, we, we created a creative bubble where everybody had a right mm. to say anything. We approached everything collectively. Um, and I think that's that was part of the, it's part of the, the time frame of how long you've been doing music for. You fall into a comfort zone. You fall into a way mm. of knowing how to do it. But then sometimes like, you, you you say to another guy, hey, you write the song. Yeah. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you start hearing Mo's or Duda's melodies, mm. even though they might not have lyrical content, but he will say, yo, why yeah. don't you do a song with ba, 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 da, ba, ba. And as I hear that, I'm hearing ang mamel, ang mamel. And so I'm able to steal melody. We steal from one another. Steal. Mm. We, mm. we work together. Yeah, yeah. I love that so much, man. And uh more so i will ask you about the album uh we made it but just before we get on with that i've got a voice note um addressed to you guys from uh some other guys some other owens let's get through it and then we'll carry on with the conversation great yo what's up guys it's your boys jay i'm from the 041 now in the 011 and we'd like to send a shout out to sir lsg for having us on bread for soul and we're going to talk about co-producing the GOATS, the Loving Legends latest album, Mikasa, called We Made It. Yeah, yeah. Yes, man, what an experience. Uh, what, do you, what do you remember, Wayne, man? Man, the first, the first day, I think, was... Or oh, actually, not the first day. The first time they told us was last year. Yeah. I'm not sure when exactly, but last year. And Jay came into the studio and he said that, they would like us to co-produce the latest album called We Made It. And we were like, what? And then a uh, few months later, fast forward a few months later, the Jens got the house in the Pumalanga and we've made the album in a time period of six months. And that is how long We Made It took. Yeah, there was only music in that house. <laughs> you wake up <laughs> and it's just music pumping. Man, but shout out to Mikasa for, for having been part of this journey. It's something that we'll never, ever forget. And just to be surrounded by musical goats like themselves, it's... Yeah, it's a blessing. It's man. a blessing, man. And, and that energy, the, the way that we listen to music is different. The way that we produce music now is so different. And it's all thanks to them. I remember there was a time when we were working on a song. I can't remember specifically which track it was, but Duda came in and he just said, like, guys, the song is done. And we were like, no, nah, we can still put more sounds. And he just said, no, nah, it's good. And that's something that we learned because we're so used to putting different sounds and different elements in a, in a record. Sometimes less is more. And that is something that, I know we will never forget. So sometimes you don't need to go too much into a record. What did you say, Roy? Yeah, I would say the same, man. Like, and another dope thing was like when we met up at the house in the Pumalanga, the first week, it was like us going into a new world, their world. But they were also like keen to see how we think when we make music and see where our heads are. So that was quite cool for, for us to like link up and be open-minded mm. together, you know. So that was quite cool. I also loved the the energy yeah, while I mean, making the this album like anything goes like there was no thing as now nah, that idea is to not the yeah. vibe i think everyone was open to anything and just to be surrounded by the goats is something so special and that will treasure forever i think we saw how jay something goes about writing music yeah man like it one day one morning you just like sit in a corner reading a book and then he would come into the studio and just jump on any topic and just ask ask anyone, like, yo, what do you think of that? What do you think of this? So the ideas were all over the place, but it was good that we were all, like, being a part of the, the process, you know, so that was quite cool. Mm. And Mo, Mo's own lines, yeah. Beast. He killed it, he, he killed, killed it. it. And mm. shout out to the team also, that's also part of the whole... Writing process. The writing process and horns and vocal vocals and songwriting. Shout out to them as well. There's so many things that we can say that we learned on this journey. And I think one of the most special things that I think we have learned is that be open to anything. Yeah. Explore. Yeah. Go out of your comfort zone. 
and and just create that's it just keep pushing and just keep on creating music yeah man and keep being consistent on whatever you're doing whether it's playing keys or making five beats a day whatever it is you do just keep being consistent because yeah. that's what they've been doing for 10 years <laughs> for 10 years so shout out to the goats man shout out to mikasa we appreciate you guys so much thank you for letting us be part of this journey it's an honor to be part of it and shout out to sir lsg for having us on bread for soul yeah man shout out to you much respect peace thank love you, and happiness shout out yeah, yeah. Sure. I love these guys, man. Yes, yeah, so these guys, sure. they're so, <laughs> they're sounding so smart now. Like, hey, you guys have done a really good job. And dude, I do have to ask you, man, like about the, the production, just like, where are these guys, these cats at the, like, just talking about the production level, where would you say they are on their journey? Yo, man, on their journey, they, they, they there, man. they already there, you know? Because they can flip anything around and to, to, to their own style, you know. So that, for, for instance, they can just take any track, your track, and make it a nice, chill, you know, as, like, unexpected, you know. Yeah. So sometimes when, when, I, when, I, when somebody sends me something to remix, you know, sometimes when, all I think about is, uh, okay, let me just use the same tempo and stuff. They flip everything around, man. They can take it. 120 beat and then flip it around to 90 you know not even half time because remember sometimes to remix you do half time or yeah. just double the time yeah they just time stretch that thing to to their own style yeah you know so they they brilliant you must try them bro. no if no. you want some nice chilled beats um with obviously that dragging so bad just mm. give them a track in no time Ish. Yeah, no. Trip, I'll yeah. definitely do that. And 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 Jay, I want to talk to you about these boys because these these are your boys, man. And uh, I heard a story about how you took them under your wing, you know. And they, you know, them coming to Johannesburg. Like, if you could please share, rather let me rather let you share the story of how you got these boys under your wing. Yeah, let's say for like I'm trying to hold back the tears here. To be honest with you, man, just hearing that voice note, like. You know, it's 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 a it's a ride, man. Two years ago, I I asked my wife a crazy question. I said to her, "I have these two kids in PE, and I think that they're amazing. And I have no idea what I'm doing, but I think that I need to bring them to our house." And literally, she she backed me and she said, "Let's do it." And till this day, they're living with me um and and we they've you know they've got their own little studio set up that are that we made and and they're just in there every day but more than anything i think yeah man i'm literally like a little little bit like lost for words just hearing the the voice note and seeing how far the circle has come um but i heard i heard their beats and i and i met them once um and i knew that there was something special about them and i i met i then took a flight to, to their house, I met up with their with their mom, and I mentioned to the mom that you know I really think that your boys have something special. I'd love to take them to Joburg and try and see what I can do, um, knowing very well that I don't have a lot of time on my hands because Mikasa keeps me really busy, and then you know my other hustle also keeps me extremely busy. But I felt that the most important thing I could do was just have them around me, and I could show them how I carry myself, how I deal with this industry and how i believe in music and what i what i've learned along the way and introducing them to people like uh uh like uh, duda and mo and and i mean even getting getting them to get connected with you is just such a blessing you know so every time that i see them growing and they are growing at like a, a ridiculous pace mm. because they've been given an opportunity mm. somebody has believed in them and somebody believed in me 10 years ago mm. somebody moved me to joba and passing the baton is one of the most important things in this life. Mm. I hope that all four of us, when we eventually die, we would have passed on many batons to many people to carry on mm. with the belief system that we have and the power of music and the power of being a good person and the power of humility and the power of all these things. Mm. Um, they're great, 
great kids and they are phenomenal bro at what they do they have a, such a mature ear for their age i could not believe the maturity in their approach to music that they had for their age um and and to see them being on this project and you know what i also want to say um one of the greatest blessings that came about was i i couldn't press jm onto mikasa a lot because it was my decision to bring them here mm. but what i'll never forget we were sitting in the conference room in our office and and duda said jm should come with us to the house mm. and i remember like feeling inside like this feeling of like this joy because i knew that if these kids could be around duda from a production point of view mm. they could get a baton passed on from duda that like it's so valuable mm. like there is no producer on this continent that can do what duda does mm. like he, yeah. his music capability and knowledge and and approach is phenomenal and i've had the privilege mm. of being in studios with many producers and many great producers but the fact that they got to sit with him on this project is something that i personally will never forget it's something that i'll forever forever be grateful for um and and i know and we, i mean we can hear it in the voice note that it's something that's touched these kids like man you want you want to understand and 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 what a blessing it has been because the sound that was developed it's the sound let me tell you what that sound is what you're hearing on that album is you hearing individuals that are allowing other individuals mm. to grow with them mm. there's power in community there is power in collaboration there is power in working together and i mean it sounds like a presidential speech Dude. but there re there really oh. is man yeah. there amen. really is yeah. amen amen man amen. Uh, and uh, it's such a beautiful to beautiful thing to see but also jay to, just talking about jm ne, what what i really love about the guys too they are so humble you know they're such nice guys they're like the sweetest guys i've ever met i'm like what wow, these guys are yeah. so dope you know and i like seeing that and i think it also you also wrap off onto them you know because i try to push this thing on the show this idea about kindness and uh, mm. i always felt that for a long time the music industry it it always had seemed to be like the biggest superstars have to be the nastiest people to other people you know so it's so nice to see nice people really growing in the industry to promote being nice you know like it, it's yeah, as simple yeah, yeah. as that and uh, i want to ask you though more about something that jay mentioned um environment sure. not necessarily environment as to where you stay but environment as to the influences that influence you um um your dad you know was a, a major contributor to your own career being you know growing up seeing somebody who performed music somebody who uh, um um what can i say rehearsed a lot trained you know just yes. crafted their own career it drops off onto you how important is environment sure. in that sense and and development from like being just being mentored by other people you know what like um now that you're saying this you're taking me back to his favorite word that he would always just like if he saw me or, or like like I, i was going to visit his house he would say to me listen the first thing is that have you been practicing you know practice 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 you know and no matter the excuse that I'd come up with, you know, like if like we didn't get time to practice because we're so busy like on, on, on the road, like type of thing, but like you would press on a practice type of thing to say, listen, you have to practice, you know, because that's the only way that you're going to be able to to carry on with this instrument, you know, because the more you you don't practice, and then the instrument will also like expose you type of thing, you know. <laughs> so, and trumpet is like that. Trumpet, you know, is not like a flugel horn or that like Google horns have got this warm sound yeah. that's already there it's already done you know yeah. and trumpet you kind of have to work it yourself you set the proper proper tone with the trumpet you know mm. and that's the one thing that he would stress all the time and and yeah you know like he was always just motivating me um i would like listen to his mango group records play over them you know try to play like him a lot you know mm. and that did something for me you know and that's that's where like most of my sound came from mm-hmm. and um he's actually the first person where i heard a trumpet sound from mm-hmm. all the trumpet legends that 
are out there, you know, or actually had been here with us, you know, like mm -hmm. for, for the likes of Huma Sikela, Miles Davis, Louis Armstrong, which was my dad's favorite, Louis Armstrong. Mm -hmm. uh, but like the list just goes on. Blue Mitchell, you know, all these great trumpeters. Uh, but he was the first person where, like growing up, where I was like, yo, what is that type of thing, you know? And yeah. that was, he's, 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 you, you, like special touch that he had, you know, and where you'd play one note and that grabs your attention fully yeah. and you want to hear the rest, you know? Yeah. So it's something big that, 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 that he did for me. You know, one day he was like to me, we're having lunch and, and he was like, yo, man, I feel like I haven't done much for you, you know, because you turned 21 or, or 20, you know, but like, as a dad, I wanted to buy you your first car, your first townhouse, your first, and I said to him, whoa, 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 you've given me the, the, the biggest gift ever, you know? Like, you taught me how to play trumpet, and trumpet has been the thing that's been carrying my life, you mm -hmm. know, because music has been, you know, and especially Mikasa, you know, mm -hmm. has been that that group, or, or music, let me just say, that's mm -hmm. made me go on, you know? There's so many things that I, I could have done, but like, my dad was there, and, you know, he motivated me, uh, he pushed me, yeah and he taught me not to give up you know and and that's done like the most amazing thing for me today you know mm -hmm. and uh just to also go back you know because you never asked me about jn and, and, and i love the boys yeah 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 no, <laughs> I love go ahead, so but sure. um but yeah man, but but i can also just go on about the boys because you know the jens are just you know they got something so special and um they also joined me on that brass lounge uh, like yes. event that i was always doing you know I think there's a day when you share the stage with them also, you know. So, yeah. I, like, yeah, the guys are, are just something else, man, you know. And, like, big ups to Jay also for just, you know, um, to just, like, taking the boys, you know, you know, from day one where I was also like, yo, what's Jay going to do, you know, like, mm. or how long the boys going to be here? Mm. But he was just like, yo, you, like, the, the boys are here and, you know, what, we'll see what happens type of thing, you know. Mm. He, he, he just said to me, we'll see what happens. And now, seeing, like, the work that they've put in, the work that they've also put in within the new album um yeah there's just so much there's a remix that there's just down of church bells that's just like yo man yo yeah. that one i can't wait for the release yeah. you know it's too fresh you know yeah and um yeah i mean the, they're just too talented you know you ask them for anything they'll do it yeah. you know and um yeah man, so one love to waven and ruane ruru you know i call him ruru <laughs> but yeah man big up to jm for sure, for I love sure. what you're doing, Lesepa. I think that spreading, you know, love, spreading, uh, you know, good vibes, positivity, and the importance of being there for one another. Man, like mentorship or having people that can be there for you to to guide you. I don't I don't even guide them a lot musically. Mm. They they have the diamond, they know how to make music, they can they have the ear, they hear it. Mm. What I'm trying to teach them more than anything is how to be men. How to carry yourself in the storm mm. that is music. Mm. Um, so yeah, mentorship, I mean, like, it's so so crucial, man. I mean, even to an extent, Duda was was a huge mentor to us in the beginning. Definitely to me. I had no mm. idea what I was doing. Yeah. I, had, I had no idea what the music industry was about. Mm. I would sure. always lean on him. I'd look to him and say, yo, is this normal? What's happening? What should we do? Mm. So it's, it's crucial. Mm. Definitely, definitely, bro. And uh, uh, just more, man. Uh, if you're going to mention legendary trumpet players you cannot leave out lee morgan that's you know, no, no no otherwise no. i'm cutting you out that's, of this interview yeah <laughs> no, that's, that's like one of my right favorites there, you know for sure for sure and uh do no, that that's sure. <laughs> sorry sorry man. sorry to cut you more do that just like uh performing at the united states inauguration like the presidential inauguration for barack obama like not everybody does that on their first year of existence and you guys did it you know like but also i i think it's a combination of having a good band firstly but also having a good team behind you who were some of the most influential people in your career especially in the beginning stages oh at the beginning stages my man you know there was um one guy that i always look up to which is Quentin harris you know, so I remember we were in um, Devon when um, DJ U used to host those um, conferences. Yes. So we were in Devon um, at the time I had released a Latin Soul, that track, you know. Hey. So <laughs> as <laughs> me and Muso were playing, you know, at this, you know, after party uh, type of vibe, I just saw a guy running 
from the crowd. You know? I was like, hey, who's this guy? And Musu was like, hey, 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 this is Quentin Harris. I'm like, really? Are you sure? You know? The guy says, yo, who's this? I'm like, no, it's it's me. Who are you? <laughs> you know, like, I'm starstruck. Like, yeah. who are you? I'm DJ. You, you know, like, you're so confused, you know? And then he, he stopped the track. He literally stopped the track and then started playing it again from the scratch, you know? Mm. I was like, yo, looking up to this guy and he's right here in front of me um, doing this crazy thing, you know? So that kept me, you know, pushing every day, making music all the time, you know? Mm. So Quentin Harris was one of, the, um, one of the biggest guys that I looked up to, you know, obviously locally, um, when we started producing house music, because there was this thing that house music in South Africa, only D, uh, DJs like Fresh and, you know, they bring it from overseas and then do what we call a compilation and stuff, you know. I think nobody believed that you can produce house music until DJ Cleo opened doors, yeah, yeah. you know, for everyone, you for know. Sure. So, yeah, and then next was DJ Cleo. D- DJ Cleo was the guy, man, who, who used to program house music on stage, you know, looking at him, like, live, doing it. I was like, he was amazing, just amazing, bro. Yeah. So he opened doors for all of us, you know, so. Mm-hmm. And now house music is popular in South Africa because of them. Mm-hmm. Bro, I need to get his context from you for the show, because, hey, man, yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. like he's got such wealth, um, a big wealth of knowledge. And Jay, I want to ask you, man, because you guys are obviously celebrating ten years. Like I said, five albums later, you've reached. You know, one of the albums had like triple platinum, like triple platinum. These guys, you know, like <laughs> it's such a big thing. And um, I want to ask you about the journey. Like just looking back at the journey, you know, now, um, it's usually easy. To start you know everybody can can have a, a great time in a relationship at the beginning stages during the honeymoon phase everybody can can show up everybody can buy flowers you know but it really becomes more difficult more challenging as you go in as the years go what are some of the times or which are some of the difficult moments especially in the early days that firstly got to you guys out of the honeymoon stage and needed you guys to stick together yeah, I, I feel like everybody wants to reach the top. And then when you reach the top, you realize that the only way to go is down. You know, it's 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 a weird thing. Or you just try and stay at the top for as long as you can. So you're fighting and you're trying to stay at the top. Mm-hmm. And it's it's one of the, the I don't know, not, not the problems, but I think it's one of the, the tough things is, is when you reach the top, when you've won the awards and gotten the platinums and then all the whatever, all that the, the the stuff you realize that shit man like i can only go down from here unless i try really hard to stay there and mm. the best thing that i've learned is just to not be obsessed with being at the top mm. be obsessed with doing music that is authentic be obsessed with with growing and challenging yourself to always be better than you were before mm. and I think that one of the things that Mikasa did with a lot of effort, bro, like with a lot of hardship, because um, it's hard, is is we try to stay true to ourselves as much as we could along the way. Mm. And I think that out of the honeymoon phase, what then changed is the pressure, Mm. the pressure of like, yo, can you keep it up? Mm. Um, Can you can you stay there? Can you can you find a way to stay in people's minds and it's a draining thing mm. and you find and i see it so much now you know like how how people just sway with the wind mm. just because they know it will work mm. so now uh sir lsg is making gom because gom is popular so now he's trying to do that and then but weren't you a hip-hop dj now you're playing my piano now you're playing gom like mm. what are you mm. you're you're a trend chaser you just chase the season and that must be super tiring, bro. Imagine having to always change just to stay at the top. Mm. So my, my greatest pride in Mikasa is how we've approached the game. 
how we've stayed authentic and true to ourselves. We've made music that's felt good for ourselves and thank God that it's, that it's, it's related to other people. What a blessing it is for you to make a beat and a groove and a melody and a song, and then it just touches somebody. Mm. That is the gift of music. Mm. So amongst all the lessons that I've learned in these 10 years with the guys, I would say that one of the things that, that I'm most happy about is that we have stayed true to ourselves and we've not swayed with the wind of trends. We've not gone and changed sounds just to stay at the top. Mm. We've gone we've gone down a little bit on the mountain and then we try and walk up again if it if it allows, you know, mm. but stay true to yourself, you know. Authenticity is everything, not for others, for yourself. Mm. Because I've been there, man. I've been to the place where I'm just making music for others and it's not a it's not a lack of place. Mm. Mm. And 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 you're constantly fighting, man, like within yourself, especially if you yeah. if you can't create what seems to be liked by other people if you're having a difficult time then it really messes up with your mind you know like it's really difficult to to try and follow trends in that way um but more i want to ask you man like out of all of your guys achievements where would you say uh, or what would you say has been the biggest thing for you um being part of mikasa like not only individually but like as a band what would what resonated mostly with you i mean all of the achievements you played at obama's thing obama my man like, sure. come on this sure. is a serious <laughs> thing you know um <laughs> and uh, you've also done so many other events uh, in between um all over the 10 years but what is mostly what are you mostly happy about when you look back so there's actually two things you know and the first one is actually re- being able to reach the 10 years that we end you know because i mean being together has been a huge highlight for for myself Jay, and do that you know and um you know and then the second one would be like winning record of the year because you know at the summers yeah. because i mean that set the tone that set the tone because sometimes you know and that's something that that my dad also used to say to me that like it's important to win you know because that's when like people want to actually get to know more you know? and that also gives you guys to actually say wow we're doing something great you know mm-hmm. it's not that it's all about winning like every single day of course but like you need to find a way to actually say hey guys here's something cool and like this is for you type of thing you know like but just support it type you know and support it because you love it you know mm-hmm. so um, i mean yeah you know just um taking you back 10 years and taking you back to like now like right now this yeah. moment you know this this is the highlight for me yeah. that we we're able to still have this chat, you know, sure. celebrate the music, you know, um, and actually be proud of this latest album that we have, you know, yeah. because no one ever knew what was going to happen, you know, and um, there's been times when there's been like, yo, guys, should we go on or should we not? But like, you know, for me, just being together, man, you know, because this shows that we're really the family that we've dreamt of being, you know, mm-hmm. and there's also like it's got a thing of inspiring people also to being like hey man what are these guys doing right that's actually keeping them together but you know what it's not every single day that things are right you know mm-hmm. there there are those bad days but we know how to deal with them because we're family man you know mm-hmm. so 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 yeah man just the 10 year celebration of Mikasa hey, and even though we we're these crazy times of this pandemic but like you know what we're making it work, man. You know, the castle always has this way of saying, "Hey, guys, we're gonna get through this," you know, mm. and we're gonna get through this with our with our people because so many people have also thanked us and being like, "Yo, guys, thank you for this album in this crazy time. We needed this," you know. Mm. So, um, yeah, man, just family is the word that I'll end this whole thing with, you know, yeah. like just yeah, family, man, and that's what we've become. Yeah, I do have to ask you though, um, Duda, about like this new album have there ever been talks between you guys of maybe delaying because i know you had planned um tours you had a european tour plan a south african tour as well to celebrate firstly the decade milestone and the new album but have you guys um oh, i mean the album is out now but i do i'm interested to know where you was there a conversation about delaying the release of the album yeah, man, there's the, the, there was many um, talks in the meetings where whether we should delay this album, you know, and before it was the release, it was being delayed also, 
you know, in um, in June, you know, so it went out. Um, so the issue was, can we release this album during these times, you know? Um, simply because of we were just worried about the attention. We were just worried about songs going to waste, you know? Mm. But I guess this was a blessing in disguise because this is what people are need are in need of, you know, great music, especially to through these trying times, you know, everyone needed um, these type of songs to get them, you know, uh, going throughout the day, you know. Mm. So yeah, man, they, we, we were just, you know, wondering, Ish, let's just hold it back until this um, pandemic stops, you know. But yeah, I'm great. This um, all the songs are making, you know, people get through their days, difficult days, difficult times, you know. Mm. So we we're getting like. Lots of messages all the time, you know. Some mm. remember some stopped their uh, um, wedding um, um, anniversaries and stuff, but mm. with getting messages inboxes. So hey, this is my wedding song, Mamela. Mm. Hey, next year I'm getting married. This is definitely my song. Mm. You know, Eve. No, this is like, like they they saying so many things. Mm. You know, so I guess it's working through these hard, hard times. You know? Yeah. So it's gonna continue, obviously, even after the storm. Sure. To you know, start again and celebrate. You know. And I think like that's um, our role as as musicians, as artists. Our role is really not only to make music selfishly, but to give music that impacts other people Speaks, differently. Yes. You know, and and what more time than the current times when it's so difficult for many people. Um, but I do mind want to say that, like, when I listen to church bells, I feel like year gigs and <laughs> miss gigs, man, because I know that song would be killing it right now, you know. Yes, yes. anyway, um, Jay, just uh, in closing, man, I want to get some advice from you because I heard that, um, there was always a strategic plan on how you guys wanted to perform in other countries, you had two plans. Two, uh, two years planned for South Africa to really focus on South Africa in the beginning and then two more years to, to kind of focus on the rest of the African continent and then, you know, the rest of the world after that. Um, so I want to ask you, how can local artists create their own reach outside South Africa? And, and secondly, do you think that it's rather important to have a solid following here at home before branching out to everywhere else? Kumbule Kai, like it's it's something that I was taught in his Tulsa, like early in my in my age, and it was like, never forget home, mm. always remember home, and I think that that for us has been not only because Mikasa is my house, but we've been quite like strategic in the fact that like it's all about primarily, home is where the heart is. So, if you are an artist and you're looking to grow outside of South Africa, it's extremely important that you first establish firm foundations in your house mm -hmm. so that you can go out with the blessing, blessings from your house, mm -hmm. right? These are, these are things that we know about, mm -hmm. right? But sometimes we start focusing on America before we focus on home, mm -hmm. right? We chase, a lot of people chase stardom and they don't chase musicianship. Mm -hmm. You chase fame, but you don't want to chase putting in the work to making great music that has sustainability and longevity. Mm -hmm. um, and then once we had established, because we didn't, we didn't know that we would even grow out of Joburg, bro. Like it, it would be a lie. We, we, we were just making you, we had no idea what we were doing. Mm -hmm. um, we were just expressing ourselves. And then when we started to get gigs outside of South Africa, in Africa, we then went into the second gear. And the second gear was our continent mm -hmm. now we've got a firm foundation at home let's go out into our other home now our neighbors mm -hmm. and then so you have to learn to take one step out of at a time especially if your music speaks to the landscape that we're in and the continent that we're a part of um it also depends a lot on the type of music you're making in order to get external success you know sometimes you might you might be making that Tom Mish, Jordan Riquet type music, mm. which to be honest with you, does not have a major market here. It's, it's a niche market. There's a strong market for it, but you definitely want to look at plugging in Europe because that's uh, Europe and Australasia. Like you really want to be looking over there because that's where that sound really is mm. uh, founded and, and, and growing. So 
it's a hard one because it's always easier to look back on and explain. But when you're in the moment and when you are that artist that's super talented but wants to grow, you just want to grow and you get frustrated in that growth. Mm. But one step at a time, one day at a time, home roots are everything, not only because they give you a foundation, but more than anything, they give you a support base. Those are your cheerleaders. Mm. I remember when we went to the UK for the first time, it was so frustrating. It was a room that we sold out like let's say 500 people in i can't remember the the, the city um but they were all south africans and i was like oh man we came all the way to the uk to play for south africans and i'll never forget uh black coffee saying bro those are your cheerleaders that's how it starts mm. go to these places because you have other south africans there mm. home home is where the heart is there are south africans everywhere there are Africans everywhere, mm. and that's what we're realizing now. That's what the Nigerian acts realized. Mm. They're like, yo, we have Nigerians everywhere. Mm. They will support us. So, Kumbulekai, like always, home is important. Never forget to go back home. Never forget to pay tribute to the people that uh, that, that were there for you from before you were anybody, anything. Mm. Nah, super, super, bro. Mo, I want to ask you one last question, my man. If Jay has got flu ne, or something and then can't sing, between you and Duda, who's picking up the mic? <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely me, man. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I, I miss... <laughs> no, 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 should we test that out no quickly? One. Let's no test one. it out. <laughs> no, you know what? There's, a, there's actually a story that I have for you. And this is something where, you know what? Myself and Duda... <laughs> I'll never forget this, man. You know? Yeah. So there were times when we, because I couldn't stop at shows, man. We'd have gigs like crazy. We, 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 like there's even a time when you had like seven shows within one day. And uh, Jay was like, yo, guys, like, listen, I'm not well, you know? Mm. And we had been booked by two promoters that were that were not taking like that, that, that no for an answer, you know? Mm. And um, yeah, they were like, yo, guys, listen, Jay has to be here. Uh, you, you guys have to perform, man. And I remember one was in Cape Town, and I can't remember. Or oh, the second one was Latinova, you know. And so now the guy was like, "Listen, so Sergio, uh, who's our manager, of course, and he he says, hey guys, listen, you guys, do the mo, you have to go to the show.' We're like, oh, <laughs> oh, 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 this gonna happen?' He says, "No, you can't. You have to go to the show." And you know, I tell you, these promoters, uh, some of them, they come with these big bounces. Eh? So you're like, yeah, where's Mikasa? We're waiting, we're waiting. So, yeah, we got we, we got to the club. Um, and, you know, I was so nervous. I had to take the mic and be like, hey, guys, um, yeah, yeah, Jay's not well. <laughs> and, you know, but I was, I, was, I, was, I was about to wee my pants, man. And that time, like, it's, a, it's a room full of, like, people then Cape Town. And it was packed. It was super packed. And I thought, there comes a bottle or something, you know. And I was like, yo, Jay got laryngitis. And you know what, guys? We got the best fans ever because they actually were like, ah, oh, you know. Mm. No one, not even one person just misbehaved there, you know. Yeah. And, yeah, we gave them a set. Myself and Duda gave them a set. But we're like, yo, guys, this is actually dedicated to our boy that he gets better. Yeah. And uh, we just want to play, man. And it was, a, yeah, man, it was like, crazy it was like how did we do that you know yeah. without get, get, like, like coming out there with a scratch or something but we did it man and because you know why because the fans got mad love for me man mm. and we love them you know mm. and the second one was by latinova and it was the same thing like you know just having to explain and they also were like yo we understand you know but it got so awkward like during the moment because i mean there's times when he's singing and you know there's times when he, he you can go on for long, yeah. and it's like, what do I do now? You know, yeah. and yeah. I was looking at you, yeah. and then, yeah, but but we got through it, man, you know, and that's the thing that we have here as brothers, that no matter what happens, but we sort the situation out, man. Like, we, we find a way, like, mm. and we always just make sure that we're all good, and, uh, yeah, but now we're keeping our boys safe here. Uh, not yeah. laryngitis. Yeah. It's yeah. been long since he's been sick. And, uh, yeah, guys. Praise, praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! But yeah. just, but for, for, for backup purposes, for backup you know? purposes, somebody yeah, yeah, has yeah, 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 yeah. to somebody has to train how to sing. You, you, cover. No, you can never. Yeah, you can listen, never. I've tried, I've tried, I've tried. But if I if I had to give the mic to anybody yeah, in the band, yeah, it would be to Duda, because <laughs> like 
Yeah, no, you can actually hear Judah singing on on Chucks if you would like. Uh, he's there on the chorus. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, I know. Uh, I'm, I'm not giving up. Come on. Hey, Tara, hey. The worst day of my life, bro. I can't speak. <laughs> no, but guys, I I just want to say thank you so much. You know, like um, uh, firstly thanks, for for joining me. Uh, thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, brother. And uh, we appreciate you, man. We appreciate what you're doing, and and uh, you know, we we love your music, we love your art. Thank you. And uh, and now on top of this, we also love this platform that you're creating to share stories, and uh, and we we appreciate you. We salute you, bro. Thank you, thank you so much, and and oh, I, I really wish you guys all the best. And like ten years, maybe more, uh, times that by fifty, you know, coming just fifty more years yes. of Mikasa or something like that. Yeah. Let this just Ima- keep on growing. Imagine, imagine, do the fifty years from now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Badala, badala. Nee, you you can still DJ in your walking stick there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just say twenty more years. Okay, twenty okay. more years. Twenty yeah. more years. Let's keep oh, it yeah. there. Okay, cool. Yeah. No, thank you so much. And to guys who are watching Thanks this, thank you for watching. Thank you for you know being part of the show um i just want to say tag somebody in the comment section who might learn from the conversation who might enjoy the conversation too but also share the video so more people can see it you know uh, yes. otherwise guys thank you thank you so much um i just want to say peace out let's stay creative bless you bro peace Hola. Hola. Hola,